Now that's logical. That would be resolving itself at the end and everything is right, but non sequitur, what is that? Something's not in sequence. Something does not follow logically. Let's ask this AI what it means. Alexa, what does the word non sequitur mean? Non sequitur is usually defined as an inference or a conclusion that does not follow from the premises. For more, ask me to give you more definitions for non sequitur. Alexa, give me more definitions for the word non sequitur. I have one more definition for the noun, non sequitur, a statement containing an illogical conclusion. A statement containing an illogical conclusion. Now that's something to fix on. Now you've learned a new word, non sequitur. We won't go into the antonyms, <laughs> but let's, let's fix on this idea of finding a, a statement, like a musical statement that I just played. It was a statement that had a logical conclusion. It was in the same key, and there weren't any foreign notes that were you know, ending on or anything. Um, so there was no cognitive dissonance. I like using that word too. There's a video <laughs> named that on my channel. You should find that. The, the little people that love me here. Yeah. Well, we'll just uh, respond to that. Yeah. Anyway, the the concept <laughs> is uh, non sequitur is uh, something that doesn't have a logical conclusion and it reminded me of uh, the time that our pastor that we had something like 40 years ago was arriving at a conclusion that was not logical and uh, what happened was um, well I'll tell you the little story okay uh, this is going to help you solve a riddle with wisdom and we know where wisdom is, hopefully. Our former Christian pastor became very upset when I asked him why we were not doing anything written in the scriptures and living by every word that proceeds from the mouth of Yahuwah. That was an interesting question that I took to him. He told me, well, pick one day out of seven and rest on it, and the principle would be in effect. When I ask him if it would be okay if I picked the one that Yahusha rested on, he told me I would then be a Judaizer. Huh? That, that sounded bad, didn't it? That sounded ridiculous to me. It was an illogical conclusion, wasn't it? That sounded so ridiculous because it was a term coming from a, a council in 370 CE called the Council of Laodicea when a decision was made to make the Sabbath observance anathema worthy of death and that kind of followed with the Constantine's Creed look that up write that down somewhere look up Constantine's Creed and read that and you'll see why everything has gone into bizarro world the master of the Shabbat, the master of the Sabbath, do you know who that is? Well, he's, he mentioned that he was the master of the Shabbat, and, and um, an interesting thing happened in, in Matthew chapter 24 concerning the last days. In the last days, he, say, he said to his Nazarene to pray that our flight not be in winter, or on the Sabbath, or the Shabbat day. What? Is he talking about the first day of the week, or the seventh day of the week? He's talking about the end times. Pray that your flight doesn't occur on the Sabbath, okay? Now, the master of the Sabbath is not the master of Sunday. Sunday sounds kind of suspicious, doesn't it? The day of the sun. Now that was set up by Constantine in an edict that also carried the death penalty called the Edict of Constantine. Look that up. 
read it and very carefully go over that. Now, this master of the Sabbath, which is Yahusha, called us out of the circus that we were in because we weren't doing anything in the scriptures. But now we've spent decades exposing the false day of the sun as the mark of the beast. Now, how can I say that the day of the sun or Sunday is the mark of the beast? Bear with me. The seventh day of each week, we can't buy and sell. Why not? Because you're obedient to the commandments. The fourth commandment, remember Shabbat to keep it set apart. And Nehemiah or Nehemiah chapter 13 talked, talks about closing the gates before Shabbat to keep these rowdy foreign and pagan people out of the city because they were buying and selling. It's written right there. It's, that's Nehemiah or Nehemiah chapter 13. Just read that. They came back from Babylon they started breaking the commandments again and violating the seventh day. It is an eternal sign. Ezekiel or Yekeskel chapter 20 says it's a sign between Yahuwah and his people forever. Forever. I wonder how long that is. Infinity, you know. Time infinite. It doesn't stop. The seventh day of the week, it was the first seven days of creation that he rested and we were told to rest as he rested at Hebrews 4. Enter his rest. Christians have not been taught wisdom because they've abandoned the Ten Commandments and therefore have taken the mark of the beast, ignoring the eternal sign of the covenant, Yahuwah's Shabbat. When those not having the mark of the beast cannot buy and sell, He's going to burn the earth for a reason. Yashiyahu, they call Isaiah, chapter 24, gives you the reason that he's going to burn the earth. Because they broke the everlasting covenant. The disobedient inhabitants of the earth are going to be awakened by fire. And they're going to perish. We are going to be standing in their midst watching them burn because we obeyed his commandments and know his name. Just read Psalm 91 slowly and you'll see it. Thanks for watching this and remember like and subscribe, share the video and hit the notification bell for future videos. Baruch Haba Bashem Yahuwah. Blessed is the one coming in the name of Yahuwah. Thanks for watching.